Thank you for joining me, fellow Guardians. This is Sam from Multiverse Mission Control, and today's quest is learning video games. So, today we cover the fighting game, time-honored favorite of video game tournaments worldwide. Of course, when I say fighting game, I mean any game that features player versus player mechanics, usually 1v1, though arena fighters do pop up here and there. This is likely to be the most common multiplayer activity amongst friends, and sadly, also the most difficult to learn. <laughs> Even players who are strong in other genres may have to dedicate some outside time to study and practice before they can even catch up to their friends. Prospective pros will have to learn a wide vocabulary of move and character types if they ever want to hit a tournament in earnest, and I'm still not completely clear on some of the aspects. But if you're just getting into this for fun, you don't need to bother with any of that right away. It's not a requirement to memorize every hitbox in every turn. No, all you need to realize just to get into fighting games is that at its core, it's an elaborate game of rock, paper, scissors. With a few more bells and whistles attached. This is why they say that a newbie can beat a veteran player just by mashing buttons randomly. Order cannot stand up to chaos, you fools! <laughs> and indeed, that may be a good idea if you're playing a fighting game you're unfamiliar with. At least until you observe enough to get a better idea of how it flows. Most players will stick to a few easy but powerful moves their first time playing. The bread and butter combos. If you choose to master these moves, you may not win any tourneys, but you will learn how to time these moves really, really well. As you play more matches, you will slowly experiment with more complicated techniques at your own pace. Real-life martial artists teach basic moves for weeks at a time before they will move on to more complicated motions. I feel like it connects... I feel like it all connects really well. Because if you start with a stable, reliable base, then learning is just a process of adding layer upon layer upon that base until you reach the top. Similarly, maybe you only stick to one or two characters at first. That's fine. Learn how to play them really, really well. In fact, some people just pick a main and never play anything else, which is fine. They're having fun, and some people are just undeniably pimped out with their main. When and if you decide to broaden your skill set, it will be when you decide, just on a whim, that you want a change of pace. Once the fight gets roaring, the blood is rushing and it becomes a complicated rush of trade-offs. Blow to block to special to counter to dodge to act- I thought he was doing something else! <laughs> because the key to winning is to unbalance the other guy's rhythm. Either by making them unsure of what you're doing, or unsure of the efficacy of their own skill. There's a strategy called Rushdown, which accomplishes the latter pretty well. Basically, once a player lands a hit, they follow it up by just hitting their opponent hard and fast with continued series of combos before the opponent even knows what's going on. They either knowingly go for flashy ones, or else they just button mash, hold forward, and hope for the best. The goal is to keep the opponent from even getting a breath to realize what's going on. Their world becomes chaos, and every move seems flimsy and ineffective. If anyone's read Discworld, Rincewind had a moment like this. Rincewind fought as he always fought. Without skill, or fairness, or tactics, but with a great deal of whirlwind effort. <laughs> the strategy was to prevent an opponent getting enough time to realize that in fact, Rincewind wasn't a very good or strong fighter, and it often worked. <laughs> he plunged forward, fighting now out of terror of what would happen if he stopped. <laughs> Marvelous. Just like a fight in the real world. But though it's meant to mimic Chaos Incarnate, Rushdown will only work for so long before it ironically becomes rather predictable, so be sure to learn a few other tricks as well, nah? The fact remains, you need to pay attention to how the opponent moves. They're expecting to get away with certain moves, and they're expecting you to attempt certain moves. The first round is technically not you trying to win, but you trying to get a read on your opponent. I have heard stories of pros purposely not giving it their all on the first round, losing, and then coming at their opponent in a beautiful flurry of impenetrable combos in the next two, winning it all just like that. To that end, never underestimate how much slipping in a weak move at the right time, or even doing something that just doesn't make sense, can mess you with your opponent. You can only expect so many things at a given time, so a strat that just plum doesn't make sense can make them unsure of what the heck you're doing next. Similarly, having your ultimate move ready, but choosing not to use it for a while can unnerve the opponent. And now they're gonna use it. Uh, wait, no, okay. NOW! Shoot, now, NOW! No, now, get- 
As ultimates are notoriously scary moves, they will of course try to prepare for them. But if they end up leaving themselves open to 50 other moves trying to prepare for a KO that isn't coming, <laughs> then you can just capitalize on that all up and down the stage. And then of course, the, on the other hand, maybe they think you're going to save it and you pop it right when their guard is down. BAM! Expect your opponent to rage quit after that. <laughs> If you're lucky enough to get the game yourself to train up, there are a few steps I would recommend. First, beat the single player campaign. It's often the case with fighting games that learning is best done on the fly. Even if you're just button mashing, your subconscious will be picking up on a lot of information without you even realizing it. If you see the AI using nifty moves and think, hey, I could use that in my repertoire, take a moment to look up how to do it and practice a bit before incorporating it into a serious fight. After you beat single player, just start testing yourself against more and more difficult AI. Like lifting weights, go until you can comfortably handle one level and then move up a class. In between training sessions, challenge other players to see how you're growing and how long until you advance again. I always tell people that I got so good at Smash Bros because I was constantly being thrown into the crucible. I got my butt handed to me by players leagues above me and I took on in-game challenges of insane difficulty like beating the events or boss mode on intense mode. I spent my free time unlocking everything and emerged so OP that everyone eventually stopped playing with me. But then I went to college and found people on my level and I was happy again. <laughs> and I like to think I helped others improve their skills as well. Sorry bragging, but that's the truth of it. You fling yourself at things outside your weight class until you dwarf them all. <laughs> that is, until you meet the next guy up. Bruce Lee once said, There are no limits. There are only plateaus. And you must not stay there. You must go beyond them. There are always people striving to do better, and always someone better than you. But for this genre, another quote fits rather well. It is possible to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. Own your skill level. Be the best in your weight class. Enjoy the moment. When you move up, it won't be because you're trying to prove something. It'll just be the case that you need a new challenge. Like catching up with Joe, the god-made flesh of Brawl who gave me one of the most intense matches of my entire gaming- I'm sorry. Okay, with the basics out of the way, let's show off the quest board. This is a list of titles that I believe will make good starting games for this genre. This is meant only to be a suggestion, as difficulty is a rather subjective thing people have managed to get started with much harder and much weirder, at least to my mind. Oh, and kid viewers, unless your parents are cool with it, please stick to the age-appropriate ratings. I don't want to get in trouble. With that, here's a list of good starting fighting games for new players. And you'll notice there are much fewer and not all are good fits because fighting games are really freaking hard, but hey, I do what I can. Once you've got the basics down and a better idea of what you want out of games like this, decide for yourself what kind of challenge to explore next. Ask a friend, watch a review, or poke around online a bit and choose a title that seems consistent with what you've learned, or else will challenge you to the next step up. When you're able to set your own goals, the process of getting good becomes much more fulfilling. And with that, I think that this is the end of this series. There are, of course, many other genres of games out there, and many blends of genres. RPG, stealth, horror, sandbox, puzzle, rhythm, bullet hell, racing, etc. But these tend to use similar tricks or else build off the games that I chose. I tried to pick genres that I felt would be the easiest to explain and the most likely for new players to encounter. I actually would have included racing games, but uh, I actually kind of suck at them. I hold gas forever and drift instead of breaking! That's good enough, right? Right? In any case, if you pick up a few of the titles that I recommended, or ones that are similar to them, then you should be able to develop the skills and instincts to hit games of harder difficulty and weirder genre mixing. Most important is to let that search be self-directed. Don't feel you should play a game because you have to, or because you're expected to, like, do it because it caught your interest, and you think it will be legitimately fun to play. After all, you should only commit to a quest if you truly believe in it. So beyond this point, if there are any struggles to learning video games that I did not cover that you are personally dealing with, 
whether it be with mechanics, culture, social interactions, or anything even tangentially related, please leave a comment below. I will try to clarify as best I can, but for now, it looks like the series is done. There's always more to learn though, so I'm not going to mark this quest as completed just yet. That's on you guys. Thank you all for giving it a shot, and I hope it was able to help a few of you out. Remember, it's not about catching up to everyone else. It's about being able to surpass your past self. Even if you only pick up the controller once in a while, I'm sure I'd be happy to have y'all at my side when the multiverses collide. So, thank you all for tuning in, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and remember, you all have the potential to get good. So the multiverse is counting on you players, go get some quests done. Peace out.